Known as the Emerald Isle, it's hard to believe our ability to grow grass could ever be a concern. But the recent fodder crisis highlighted the serious challenges we now face in growing our most important crop. The spring fodder crisis earlier this year was the worst in decades. It cost the economy an estimated 900 million euro and put a lot of Irish farmers under extreme pressure. So I'm farming this farm for 25 years and it's most definitely the worst winter I've ever seen and the most expensive one too. We have to purchase extra feed for three months, which is nearly 55% from our normal winter. Grass is our most nutritious, but also our cheapest feed. And we are depending on grass. I can graze a cow on 25 cents a day on grass, but once I put on the shed and feed her silage and straw, she'll cost me 125 a day at least, if it may be more. And in terms of monitoring grass now, what do you use to help you optimise what you have? We measure grass every uh, Monday morning. We have a plate meter to do so. And we put the grass measurements from every pack paddock that is grazed uh, during that week. We put it into the computer. It'll show me exactly on the uh, a printout. The green grass, as you can see, is the graph that shows the grass growth. Mm -hmm. The red line is then, it shows the demand. Our aim is to have the grass row to demand sort of growing as close as possible. So it's clear here that demand is outstripping supply at the moment. You have too little grass. Yes, because through the dry weather now, over the last four weeks, we had a reduction in grass grow by 20% each week. We made the decision when the green line slipped under the red line that we actually sold some stock. I was happy with the money I got for the cattle and I think the price has dropped this week because a lot of farmers are now in the same boat. They need to sell cattle because they haven't enough uh, grass to feed them. By measuring grass, you can make that decision earlier before everybody else does. One of the leading researchers in this area is Stuart Green, who really appreciates the value of this information for the farmer. We produce an industry that has about six to eight billion uh, euros per annum of exports. Uh, but at the farm level, uh, Chagas research has shown that even extending the grazing season, you know, how long the animals are out on the grass by just two weeks can give 2,000 euro to an average dairy farmer in terms of increased profits. As we try to expand under Harvest 2020, the, both the sort of the dairy uh, herd and the beef herd, we have to make every use we can of all the grass that's available and make sure that every field is growing the best grass it can of the highest quality. The key element of Stuart's work involves the detailed analysis of satellite imagery of Irish grasslands. Well, satellites are like a camera in space, and normal cameras see red, green and blue light, the visible part of the spectrum. But there's lots more reflected sunlight in different energies that's available to be observed and recorded. And a part of the spectrum that's just a bit longer than the red light we can see, called the near-infrared, plants respond very strongly. Ten, 12 times stronger than in the green, which is why grass looks green to us. So if we've got all that energy to record by the satellites, the satellites can see very subtle changes because it's very, very bright in that part of the spectrum. So this is our link to space. Cool. Uh, all the way from NASA? All the way from NASA. The satellite goes overhead roughly about lunchtime every day. Uh, and we can then assess, see what cloud's there, whether the, the image is useful and what we can use it for. So we can take off the green or the, the, the natural colour that we're used to seeing and display the near infrared. Oh, wow. So we can see the forestry in the middle, this sort of dull red. So there's biomass there, there's chlorophyll there, but it's not really vigorously growing. Mm. Whereas the grasslands, we can see as this bright cherry red, which means they're really growing very well. But we can see variation between the fields and even within fields. And how do you translate this information into something that's usable for a national picture? What we can do is create something called a vegetation index, where we take the ratios of all these different layers, and it gives us a single number, going from zero to one. Zero is absolutely no vegetation, like concrete. And one is beautifully growing, really vigorous. We can compare this week's performance with the average performance for this week for the last 10 years. So we can't say exactly how much grass is growing, but we can say how well it's growing compared to normal. And as we can see, from the fodder crisis, this is the middle of April, the country is doing very poorly. We're at least three, four weeks behind where we should be in terms of production. It's so clear, it's unbelievable. There's no growth, basically. Absolutely no. Wow. Hopefully next spring, as farmers can register for the service and then they can just get a, an update on their smartphone or just their normal text phone and it'll tell them the rate of growth in the area. 
Farmers know their farms, they don't really need to be told that, but we'll be able to possibly give them a, a, a week's advance notice of when spring has started. We'll get forecasts of uh, autumn fodder harvest, so we might be better prepared if we get a situation like we had this year. And in all likelihood, as weather extremes become more common, we're going to have to deal with that more often. Technology's role in monitoring grass doesn't end there. Instead of walking the fields, now we'll be flying, with farmers deploying their own UAVs to keep an eye on things. Dr. Tim McCarthy from the National Centre for Geocomputation at NUI Maynooth is here to show us how it's done. That is an unexpected piece of technology to find in the middle of a field in Ireland. What is it? Right, it's a octocopter. We use these guys with uh, cameras on board to collect uh, information um, over fields and uh, we're able to map and monitor what's going on underneath. So it's a drone for looking at how the grass is growing? Yes. What are the advantages of this system over using a satellite to monitor the grass growth? As you can imagine here in Ireland we get a lot of cloud and uh, we're able to fly it when uh, you would normally not pick up any its images from uh, satellite platforms and that is a huge advantage. It's worth saying that uh, as time moves on these systems will start becoming smarter and certainly will uh, become a lot more uh, common and they will be used as common I reckon as uh, tractors and indeed sheepdogs going out monitoring cattle, uh, going out taking a look at what's going on in your, your fields and reporting that information back to the farmer. Now what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to hand over control to you just to see uh, so you can see how easy it is to actually control these uh, platforms. And if I break it, that's cool too. No, you're fine. <laughs> right. Just to try a simple just left turn. So just move it towards the left slowly. Just slowly. That's it. Oh, it's very sensitive. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going around. That's it. A bit more, a bit more. OK, that's OK there. And we're going to try and land it. So what I want you to do with the left lever is just slowly bring it down. Hold. Left, down, slow, 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 all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, hold it down, there we go, now oh, you've got your first uh, so, I didn't crash uh, so, uh, <laughs> landing, well done. That well was done. cool. We, we are looking to recruit new um, UAV pilots, so I think uh, you'll be first on the list. Thank you. When you see things like drones going up, you kind of go wow. Oh, it's absolutely, it's fantastic, it's very exciting to see that very important that the research and science on grass, that the information is passed on to farmers so they can use that information to grow grass better and more efficiently.